What's up, digital marketing agency owners? On today's video, I want to talk about how to build a sales team to accelerate the growth within your digital marketing agency so you don't have to do all of the sales and do all of the heavy lifting. So if you're excited about taking your agency to the next level, removing yourself from the sales process, you're going to want to watch this video. When it comes to growing and scaling your digital marketing agency, typically we get really good at marketing ourselves or at least keeping our calendar full enough so that we've got our, our appointment funnel flowing and then we get good at sales, right? We get good at having those conversations with the prospects, building the rapport, setting expectations and closing the deal, right? I don't know of any agency owner that's gone to seven figures that hasn't been able to solve for sales, right? You have to be able to have those conversations. But typically, we get so good at it and we get so comfortable with it that we don't want to take ourselves out of the sales process. We figure, you know what? I'm the face of the company. I'm the one they're going to want to do business with. I need to be the one to sell them. And what I want to encourage you to expand your mind on is that if you can remove yourself from the sales process, which absolutely is possible, um, you can create a lot more freedom within your business. And so that's what I want to talk about today. And really, if we think about the agency growth system, uh, lots of videos I've shared with you guys on this here on this channel and other places, you know, we want to we want to fill the funnel. We have to land clients by having an appointment funnel where they show up pre-positioned to buy and then a great sales process. And then we have to, you know, onboard them well, have a great communication rhythm and build our account management team so that the work gets done at a high level. But what I want to talk about today is that kind of within this sales process, how to take ourselves out of being the person having those sales conversations over time. And I want to tell you, it really is one of the most amazing feelings, if you haven't experienced it yet within your agency, when a client signs up for your retainer-based service, and you weren't involved in that conversation. You weren't involved in that process. I know for me, the first time it happened, it was just like, wow, this business now is a true business, right? If you remove yourself from the sales process, ideally, before that, you removed yourself from the account management process. Before, you, before that, you removed yourself from the uh, operations process. You're not actually doing any of the work. So now you've got a machine that can generate new clients, signs up, they get onboarded, the work gets done, the, the retention is happening. And really, usually this is the last or second to last piece you remove yourself from in the agency um, as you grow and as you scale. And it truly is a powerful, powerful feeling. And so I just want to share five quick keys on this so that you can start to think about building your sales team and what you need to do to bring that into reality within your agency. Uh, number one, first you've got to make sure you've got enough deal flow, right? If you don't have enough opportunities flowing in, you may not be ready to remove yourself from the sales process just yet. Um, and really there's, there's typically three roles within an agency when it comes to business development um, and three types of sales and business development positions you might place. The, the hunter, cold caller, like kind of that prospect salesperson that's going to go make calls, is going to do outreach, they're going to try and set appointments. Then you've got the lead follow-up appointment setter, which is more you've already got people opting in, you've already got people on your list, you've already got people interested, you just need someone to chase them down and kind of kick them from interested to the calendar, right? Um, and then you've got the closer, the consultative salesperson, which would be the one that has those sales conversations, takes them through the you know, the, the kind of what we can do and how we can help and asks for the business. Usually, what I'm talking about in, in the context of this particular session, we want to have enough deal flow that we can put a closer in place and have them be busy. And maybe they do a little bit of lead follow-up as well, right? Since they're full-time and you maybe are selling part-time or running the agency, they should have enough time to be able to have those conversations, follow up with the deals that were interested but didn't close in your hot lead follow-up, and then also do some outreach on a daily basis as part of their re responsibility until they've got a completely slammed calendar. Now, a completely different side of the equation would be a business development representative or somebody that's just hitting the phones, hitting the industry lists, and trying to set appointments up for the appointment setter. 
So if you're in the place either where you don't have enough deal flow um, and you want to try and put a, a hunter in place or you've already got a sales team and you need some more action, you need more opportunities in play, then this hunter role can work. Um, I like to, to say as agencies, you want to create great content you want to set up your funnel, you want to create enough deal flow so that people are scheduling with you or your salesperson before you put this business development role in place. Uh, but if you did put it in place, ideally they would be able to generate business from the ground up. Um, you might consider commission only, um, but typically you're going to be looking for somebody that is more entry level for this type of role and, and could just hit the phone Ideally, give them some scripting, give them a dedicated list, give them an approach that you want them to follow. Uh, in my mind, if, if you're trying to use this as your main mechanism, the best thing to do would be to build a Dream 100 list of ideal prospects that you want them to chip away at. And they're just gonna chip away at that list um, via phone, via mail, via direct message on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, developing relationships over time. So that's the Hunter prospector role. The next role that I think most agencies need um, at some level in the game would be a, a follow-up slash appointment setter. So if you've got your agency funnel running, right, and you've got people opting in for your guide or opting in for your book or registering for your webinar or registering to attend your live client interviews and things like that, typically we can let the system, whether it's high level or HubSpot or whatever, we can let the system nurture those leads and take them to appointment. But if you can put somebody on your team that is fully dedicated to following up, connecting, moving people from opted in to scheduled appointment, that's gonna move things forward a lot, lot faster. Um, and typically what I see with this role is you're gonna give them a, a base salary, relatively low between 10 and $15 per hour, um, and then, you're gonna incentivize them based on the appointments. So, you know, 25 to $50 per booked appointment and maybe 250 to $500 per closed deal. If you've got good deal flow and you can keep them busy doing this type of work, they can make a solid 50, 60, $70,000 income as an appointment setter in this type of role. Uh, and this is somebody you could hire internationally. Actually, in our agency, we've got um, appointment setters from Pakistan through uh, through RepStack, which is one of our, our partner companies, um, and they make these calls, they send these emails, they push these prospects over the edge. You could also hire somebody US-based um, and, and maybe have a little bit better inflection and tone in the voice, but with proper training, this is a position you could definitely have overseas. Um, and then really when, when it comes to the closing of the deal, this is really where you're going to free yourself up. The, the hunter maybe can set appointments for you and your team. The follow-up person can maybe set appointments for you and your team, but typically you're the one sitting on Zoom, having these conversations and asking for the business. Uh, and so you wanna hire a true closer that can have those conversations for you. Um, and I really think that it's only appropriate to hire this type of closer if you've already got the deal flow which means there's already people scheduling in to the tune of 10 to 20 strategy sessions per month. It's taking up a lot of your time. You're not able to really follow through on everything. And you're gonna say, boom, hey, closer, this is you now. You're gonna take these calls. I expect you to close at my level or higher. And then I also expect you to create new opportunities that might not already exist. Um, compensation for this, you know, could be between 30 and $40,000 per year. Could be higher if you got somebody more seasoned, but mainly, we want them to get compensated based on their, their commission, right? We want them to get paid based on what they, what they do. The big mistake I see agencies make when it comes to putting a closer in place is they try and give them a residual, a large residual on the close. So, hey, these clients are going to sign up for 2,500 bucks a month and you closer are going to get 10% monthly residual, $250 per month per client. I can tell you that's a recipe for disaster. Please don't do that, right? when they're closing a set up deal for you, they should only get paid on the first month. And that's where they should earn their money. You're gonna have lots of cost of goods sold. You're gonna have lots of overhead to retain those clients, like account managers and actual team doing the work. You cannot afford to have um, a salesperson dragging all of that revenue out of your organization. Um, and if they perform, 
six, nine months down the road, you're going to want to pull your hair out and you're going to have to restructure their compensation. So what works better would be to give them like a large upfront between 20 and 30% of the first month um, and no more than maybe one to 2% on the monthly residual. Um, I don't usually give the residual. I don't recommend it, but maybe if a rep's been with you for a year, two years, and they've done a great job um, and they're asking for it, at that point, you can add that in as a, as a retention play for that particular salesperson. So this is what we see works well compensation-wise. Don't go too high with the base, um, but don't also try and go only commission, right? Because usually people need some money coming in so they can like pay their bills and they can be, you know, even keel. Um, and I haven't had a lot of success hiring commission-only salespeople that will set proper expectations. At one point, we did have a commission-only sales guy, and we're like, okay, this is going to be great. And he actually sold, right? He was hungry, um, and he sold, but he was selling way out of whack expectations. Like the clients were thinking something different than what we delivered. And so maybe pay a little bit of a base so that they're not so hard-pressed to set these crazy expectations, and you can get the right clients with proper expectations that actually stay with you long-term. So I think for a closer, again, you want between 10 and 15 strategy sessions per month, ideally at least 50 opt-ins. So if you're running Facebook ads or you're doing SEO or Google ads and you've got opt-ins for your lead magnets, your cheat sheets, your books, if you get 50 or more, that closer should be pretty busy following up with those leads. Um, obviously, people should be scheduling in if you've got this set up correctly. And so they're taking preset appointments um, and they can focus on closing the deal and following up with those appointments. And so... I could go for 45 minutes on how to build your sales team. I wanted to give you some of the key ideas around like what the right person would be, what you would want to compensate them, the distinction between there's really three different roles, right? Yes, there's the hunter, there's also the appointment setter, and there's the closer, but you need to understand what you need within your business right now. At some point, you might need all three, but usually the stepping stone is, follow up to fill your calendar more with, a, with an appointment setter. And then once the calendar is full for yourself, then you'd put a closer in place to close the deals. Uh, so thinking about the ultimate agency funnel, we need at least 10 strategy sessions per month. Usually that's the minimum threshold to go out and hire an appointment setter. When you're placing this position, you've got to map the projections. That closer, that salesperson needs to know how much am I going to make if I hit my target? So make sure you kind of plot out for them. Look, here's your target. If you hit this, this is how much you'll make over the course of the year. If you blow it out of the park, here's how much you could make on the high side. And then if you just you know, roll out of bed and do the very basics, here's how much you'll earn. This will help sell the salesperson on your opportunity and help get them on board. Um, and you know, in our member portal, we, we share the job description, um, you know, kind of that comp plan, all of the details you'd need in order to build this out. Um, make sure you hire a rock star. Um, rock star salespeople are everywhere, but you can post on Indeed, ZipRecruiter, post to your personal profile. Like if you've got a following and you've kind of already started to build your brand, um, I'm a big fan of using a video based application process. When it comes to a salesperson, I don't care about their resume, I don't care about how, right, how well they read an email. I need to hear their voice, I need to hear the inflection. And so using a video-based application process where they can record a video in advance and you can hear that before you waste any time interviewing them can be super powerful. Um, psychologically, like there's a, a particular profile we found works best for salespeople that you wanna be looking for. Um, I'm a big fan of Colby assessments. High fact find is important for selling digital marketing services, right? You want somebody that understands SEO, understands pay-per-click, will do the research to have intelligent conversations so they can set proper expectations so that they can not only sell the client, but sell them in a way that they are sticky. Um, and then they need to be at least a little bit high on follow through. Otherwise, you're going to get bored of the same call, the same conversation, the same ritual day in and day out. And for sales, you absolutely need somebody that from a disk profile perspective is high dominance, high interpersonal skills. Um, that way they got the backbone to ask for the business and ask for the yes and expect it. But they've also got the personality that they enjoy talking to people. They enjoy having conversations. They care about the person on the other side of the phone. Save yourself a lot of heartache as you recruit for salespeople 
run a Colby assessment, find out that they're at least a five on follow through, run a, a disc profile and make sure that they've got an even balance between the dominance and interpersonal. If they're too dominant, they're gonna turn some people off, right? They may close bad deals. Uh, if they're too interpersonal, you know, they're gonna wind up just wanting to be best friends with everybody and having these long conversations that don't lead to business. You wanna find that healthy balance between those two personality traits. Um, and then think in advance what the onboarding process is gonna look like. How are you gonna set expectations? How are you gonna help them feel excited about joining your organization and being part of your sales team? How are you gonna ramp them up so that they know how to have those conversations. You wanna have some type of training portal in place and you have to track. Please don't put a salesperson in place until you've got a dashboard that you can easily see. How many strategy sessions are they having per month? What's their close ratio? What's happening on those calls? And make sure that you track that. Make sure that they're accountable for it. I see a lot of agencies, they're like, hey, I'm gonna put a salesperson in place. They don't ever define, hey, here's your expectation. Here's how many strategy sessions. Here's what I expect your close ratio to be. Here's what I need you to report back to me on a weekly basis. And here's the outbound activity I need you to do if you're not hitting those metrics. If you don't have those four things, you can put a put in salesperson in place, hope for the best, and wind up super frustrated. And you have to look at those reports. You have to track those metrics. And when you do, and you get the right person, you're going to have consistent sales month in, month out without you having to be part of the process. So hopefully this was helpful. If you got value from this and some new insights on how to build your sales team, hit the like button, share this with another digital marketing agency that can benefit for, from it. Um, and if you like more ideas on how to grow and scale your agency, you take it to seven figures and multiple seven figures. I've got a training called the Seven Figure Agency Roadmap where I walk you through the big picture of how to grow to seven figures in the next 12 to 24 months and beyond. Uh, you can access that by going to sevenfigureagents.com slash roadmap. That's sevenfigureagents.com slash roadmap. Would love to know what questions you have. Post those in the comments. If you had a takeaway or something that was like, man, that really stood out. I'm going to benefit from that. Please put that in the comments. I post these videos every Monday at 10 a.m. We're talking about how to land clients, deliver world-class results, retain your clients at the highest level possible, and how to scale. And I watch the comments. So if you have a follow-up thought, please post that in the comments. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and I look forward to talking with you again soon.